Okay, now we're going to talk on the humoral immunity response. Okay, first of all, humoral. That is involved in the B cells and antibodies. Humor are the fluids of the body. So remember, antibodies work for the extracellular. They're like little bullets that go in the extracellular where bacteria things are. All right, what is this humoral immunity response? So you get a bacteria that gets past the first, uh, the first level of defense, second level, and it's into the third level. Your parents have handed you a skeleton key to this particular bacteria. You don't have specificity yet. Now remember, this is you know you have a skeleton key that you could work from. Let's say. So now what you're looking at is this antigen challenge. Okay, the, the antigen is inside you challenging, let's say. All right, so this one is the first time you've ever encountered this microorganism. First encounter between an antigen and a naive immunocompetent lymphocyte. Remember, a naive one has been educated, but has not seen anything yet. Where, where does, do, would you see this? Remember, in the spleen and the lymph nodes, and even other, the tonsils, that's where you have populations of lymphocytes. Now, remember, they were educated in either the thymus or the bone marrow, but they went to work and resided in the spleen or in lymph nodes or other secondary organs. So, this particular organism gets into the lymphatic system, is traveling through the lymphatic vessels, goes through some lymph nodes. Now, in each lymph node, you'd have several lymphocytes, but not all of them have the same receptors. So you have, so you'd keep going until you found a few lymphocytes that had skeleton key fits, let's say, for this microorganism. And that wouldn't be in every lymph node. That wouldn't even maybe be in the spleen. So finally, what happens is you find one. If the lymphocyte is a B cell, the antigen provokes a human response. So as it passes by, a lymphocyte with surface antibodies sees it, and it can recognize it, skeleton key. Antibodies are produced. So let's look how the thing would go. The B cell is activated when antigens bind to its surface receptors and cross-link. That means that the surface receptors, that antigen, would have to be large enough to lay across two receptors to cross-link them. Receptor-mediated endocytosis occurs. That was something that you saw in ANP1, where you pull in the receptor and the lichen. Remember, a lichen is anything can bond to a receptor. When that goes in, then that's when the receptor editing is, occurs. The receptor editing is where you come in, somatic recombination, and cut and snip a new tip that has specificity to this staphylococcus strain or whatever. So, you pull, pull the, so in other words, what would happen is the antigen is stuck to the receptor, is then pulled in, and then genetic action occurs to cut a new, new tip for it. You say a new tip, what do I mean? These would be the tips here to cut a new tip right there. All right, so we go back, go back. Now, what will happen is that once that occurs, those lymphocytes that have been called for it will start to clone. In other words, do mitosis to make a bunch of them. They will start to clone and make a bunch of them. Okay? What's the fate of the clones? Okay. Some of the cells, some of the lymphocytes are going to fight this organism right now they would start to produce and secrete antibodies, okay? Now, at first, the antibodies are secreted very slowly. Then finally, they gear up the job and start secreting them much faster. 
at a rate of about 2,000 molecules per second, 2,000 antibodies per second. When that occurs, we change the name from B cell to plasma cell. So a plasma cell is a B cell that has gone into massive hyperdrive. It's really shooting those antibodies out fast. Right? Now, so some of the clone did that, which would be secreted antibodies circulating the blood and lymph. They bind to those particular antigens. They bind to those antigens and can mark them for destruction. We'll see when we talk about anti what antibodies do. Clones that do not become plasma cells become memory cells. Remember, in the third line, you had memory. So if everything went to fight, all the lymphocytes went to fight, you'd have none left for memory for the next time around. So you really are having two populations after you clone. You have a population that fights and a population for memory. So when it comes again, now let's go to this. On a primary immune uh, encounter, that means the first time you've ever seen this, so occurs at the first exposure, you have a lag time of three to six days. Now, what am I saying? Because on the third line, you had to do that somatic recombination. You had to come with new tips, and you had to come with enough fighters before you start fighting. So in your account encounter, antibody came, I'm sorry, antigen came, you have three to six days before you really can do anything using the B-cell system this first time around. Then you'll start to go into massive overdrive and you'll start to have a bunch of antibodies being secreted and then about 10 days later they drop off. Antibodies decline quickly. Okay. Subsequent exposure, not necessarily secondary, but subsequent. So now this same microorganism you fought comes back a year later. But you've already developed lymphocytes that recognize it, the memory cells. So in this case, instead of the three to six day lag period, it responds within hours, within hours. And they peak at about two to three days where it was 10 days for the other. They bind greater to fight because they've really geared themselves up for that because you, because they, and they can remain around weeks to months. So the, it, it's that first time that takes a while. And after that, things really start gearing up, which you can see here. So on this graph here, when you study, you can see that the first time around took a while, but that second time, immediate. Now, this is to show another organism came in for the first time. So this is another one showing he's got to start just like you did. This may be uh, E. coli or something. Okay. Now, <clears throat> active humor immune. Okay. We have two, we're going to divide this into two immunities. Active and passive. Active and passive. Listen to me. Active and passive. Active immunity is you produce your own antibodies. Let me say that again. Active immunity is you produce your own antibodies. Okay. Passive immunity is we give you artificial antibodies. Active immunity, you produce your own antibodies. Passive immunity, we give you antibodies. Or antibodies are given. All right. Under active, there are two types. The naturally acquired and the artificially acquired. The naturally acquired is when you get an infection and you go through the rough period and create your antibodies, and then three to six days later, it starts fighting and trying to clear things up. Artificially acquired is a vaccination. Okay? With a vaccination, we give you, we, we acquire the organism, kill the organism, or weaken it significantly. Let me say that again. 
kill the organism or weaken it significantly. The weak one is called attenuated. Then we introduce that in the body. Now, that means the organism cannot give you an infection, but the lymphocytes can look at its surface. Remember the epitopes is looking at surface to see that's what it's looking at in this microorganism. So then, once it sees this foreign, you will go through and start producing antibodies, but you won't, you shouldn't get sick because the organism is either dead or weakened, attenuated. So that's what we call a vaccination. But in both cases, you are producing your own antibodies. In both cases, you are producing your own antibodies. Passive immunity is, like I said, is when we give you antibodies. Now, even in passive, there's a natural and artificial. The natural would be when you'll hear us say, like the hepatitis or something, we'll say we're going to give the patient a gamma globulin shot. Gamma globulin, three names for, antib for antibodies. Immunoglobulins, gamma, gamma globulins, antibodies, so there are different names for these. So we give you an injection and we're giving you artificially created antibodies. Now remember, because they're artificial, they're proteins, you'll only last for a while, but it'll get you over the hump. Now, so, so, so we will give you then antibodies. That's passive. And that would be artificially acquired. Naturally acquired passive immunity would be like when the mom passes antibodies in the milk. So let me go back and clarify. Let me go back and clarify. Passive immunity, antibodies are given some kind of way. Passive immunity, antibodies are given. Under naturally acquired, that means nature, that an example would be in the breast milk because you're handing the fetus antibodies that the fetus did itself did not create. An artificial would be when we give you like a gamma globulin shot. Okay. So here you can glance at that and this here. All right. Thank you. I hope this these videos help to some extent takes a little while to try to put them together and uh, it's not my best format because face-to-face -face is better where I can really get into it but hopefully these help some.